Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm going to get deeply into the nitty-gritty science of Greenland and how the sea ice will affect the melt in Greenland. A recent paper came out about the period of time looking at ice core data on the period of time from about 60,000 years ago to 22,000 years ago when there were these abrupt changes in Greenland, these so-called DO or Dansgaard Osher oscillations. These events, there were 25 odd events, they basically were on a roughly 1500 year cycle, but there would be warming exhibited over parts of Greenland um, as high as 16 and a half degrees in a decade or two. That's really abrupt and rapid change, and of course that has huge impact on the rate of melt of Greenland and um, sea level rise and the whole bit. So because we're heading to a blue ocean event where we have a no, no Arctic sea ice, then the water around Greenland, of course, will be open ocean. The melt will greatly increase, and this paper gives us an idea as to some of the things that we can expect. Um, so I'll get right into this paper. So, so these Dansgaard Osher events, they've been explained or by a number of different ideas have been proposed to explain these events. So sea ice has a huge impact, of course. You know, ice shelf build up. You know, perhaps the ice shelves can build up and then they reach an unstable point and then they collapse leading to these events. You know, so the, the ice sheets on Greenland um, would be somewhat buttressed if there's lots of ice shelves. The atmospheric circulation, of course, changes the jet streams and meltwater changes, changing the salinity of the water, affecting the AMOC perhaps things like that. So we have the stable water isotope data, um, and there's also nitrogen isotope measurements from the ice cores. Okay, so basically the gist is that the sea ice is of huge importance on the temperatures on Greenland. In fact, 95% of the variability in the, del in the delta 18O the the, um, the 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 measure of the uh, fractionation of O18 versus O16 in southern Greenland, and that can, that's the paleo thermometer, if you like. 95% of the variation of that is explained by the sea ice around Greenland. Okay. Um, now this num this this also varies across Greenland, and I'll be talking about that. So what this paper did is they simu they used a, a um, global circulation, a general GCM, glo general circulation model, global circulation climate model, to try to simulate what happened in, with the, the uh, changes, the rapid changes in temperature in these Dansgaard Osher events. And they looked at the, um, you know, how the temperature changed with the Del 18O, and they found that the larger the DO event, the the um, change in delta 18O per Kelvin temperature change was reduced. And they talked about how, you know, the precipitation seasonality, how that affects these things. So, so this is a very key paper relating the sea ice around Greenland to the isotopic composition of the water that goes into the ice, which is then correlated to the temperature on Greenland and it also tells you about the, um, the, the you, you know, you, you can basically, there's a lot of things that are affecting the ice, and this allows you to, to get the, the net effects, and then you try to tease out, you know, which parts are affecting it most significantly. It turns out that the Arctic sea ice is crucial, and I don't think that should be uh, much of a surprise. So it says understanding sea ice losses during past abrupt warming events remains challenging and so on, you know, because, you know, the sea ice cover, local climate, Greenland ice core records, 
the connection between all these things is not very well understood. But these Dansgaard Osher events are both the largest and best documented examples of abrupt climate change. Okay, um, now the paleothermometer has mostly been the Del 18O, but de the nitrogen, the Del 15 um, of nitrogen in the air bubbles in the ice is also being used to check temperature and it agrees well with the with the oxygen isotopes. Basically there were jumps in temperature over Greenland of up to 16 and a half degrees plus or minus 3 Kelvin within a few decades. Okay so um, now there's spatially spatial variation across Greenland as I mentioned um, but uh, you know, I'll, I'll talk about that. So let's look at the figures. Um, you know, the D, this talks a little bit about the DO events and what they are. So you can get it, you know, like I said, um, you know, if you go to the Wikipedia page on Dansgaard Osher event, you can get more information as well. So, so basically what we have here is this is 60,000 years ago to about 22,000 years ago. This is the Del 18O measured over time, and we see all these peaks here. Um, there's, there's like at least there's, there's 17 major cycles shown here. The average length is, is about 1,500 years, but there's a large variation. Some are very, some take a lot longer. Others are very short. Okay, uh, this is measured in three different ice cores: the grip, the gisp, and the end grip. And remember. I showed you, here's where they are, the grip, the gisp, and the end grip. Okay, so near central Greenland. Okay, so we would see a large temperature rise and then a drop down, large temperature rise, drop down. Okay, so these are the oscillations. This excursion could be as much as 16 and a half degrees Celsius. Now, if you take all of these events and put them on one plot, um, what you can see here is you can see the rapid rise and you can see it's over a very short period of time of a few decades. This is from the data and these are from the models at some different locations, end grip, grip, and gisp. Okay, so you can see these very rapid abrupt change events measured in the ice cores across Greenland with the magnitude varying depending on where you are. So the most rapid changes are in southern Greenland here and as you go up the the so the, the largest temperature excursions are down in this region as you go up here they they become um, smaller in general that's the trend that is seen here um, so this is some of the different sites of the cores this is the excursion in the del 18 o auction isotope numbers through these events. These can be correlated to temperatures. So this is the temperature, you know, a jump of 11 Kelvin. Okay, um, in this case you can see the precipitation, how, how that has changed also in the percent. And you can see the seasonality in the precipitation changing um, and also in the um, the, the seasonality in the temperature, if you like, the changes. Okay, so here's what we have. Um, so this is, the, these, this is Greenland, and the, these are the different ice core sites. During the stadials or glacial periods, the sea ice, this is the sea ice concentration 15% line, and you can see how far the sea ice extended in these glacial periods. In the interstadials or interglacial, you could see, you know, the sea ice was in in the in this location. Okay, so there's a lot, you know, when the sea ice is here, this is all open water. There could be a lot more water vapor, and that, of course, you know, significantly affects, you know, the 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 heat from the water can can cause warming over Greenland, and the water vapor. Uh, changes the precipitation regime, and all of these things affect the Del 18O on Greenland. Now, they broke down, they tried to break down in this paper, the, um, this is the data from different sites, how, how the temperature, the, the, um, 
basically this is how the isotopic ratio varied per degree Kelvin um, at different temperatures at each site and you could get so this allows you to say you know how much the temperature has changed at each site based on the isotopic record there's also um, they they broke it down into the component so this is the overall change per Kelvin and this is the sea ice coefficient which is the isotopic change per million square kilometers of sea ice coverage so what you can see is that when you compare both of these things you get very similar results so the vast effect 95 percent of the effect is from the sea ice changes okay um, so this is some other data here showing so these are changes in um, del 18 o um, and uh, what you can see is that this is the um, change in sea ice concentration here so less sea ice darker blue and what you can see is when there's a lot of sea ice lost in these regions then the del 18 changes a lot more in the south of greenland this is where the dye um, coring site is so the largest changes are clearly you know in this part of greenland and this the because of the sea ice changes between the cold periods and the warmer periods in the do oscillation cycle so what you can see is you know when this when the when the sea ice change is much less the effect you know the changes over greenland are much less okay so the key finding of this paper uh, let's go back up here to the summary here i'll just highlight it Okay, it says it's not possible to unambiguously attribute the del 18 changes to particular components like sea ice temperature, atmospheric circulation, or storm tracks. Um, but the similar patterns of del 18 temperature and sea ice relationships, figure 2, C, and D, which are these two guys here, because these are so similar. Okay, because these guys are so similar, we can say that. Um, the variance for sea ice over temperature. So 95% of the variance is due to the sea ice, and that's at the die three site. Okay, um, 70 at the end grip site, 70% sea ice versus 62% of the variance is explained by the um, temperature. So basically, sea ice is crucial around Greenland right it controls when there's no sea ice next to greenland the temperature is going to be much warmer because heat is coming from the ocean over to greenland and also the there's going to be much much more water vapor in the air much more moisture so much more snow you know on the coast etc okay so the abrupt changes basically so what this paper is basically doing is let me do uh, try to try to summarize this try to simplify this okay what this paper is showing we, we've known for a long time that there's been abrupt changes indicated in the um, ice cores on Greenland and the ice cores on Greenland go back about 140,000 years or so back they come they go back to the last interglacial period and a little bit beyond that and we've seen these periods of rapid oscillations rapid temperature spikes and then cooling temperature spikes cooling especially between 60,000 years ago and 22,000 years ago and these the temperature excursions you know the, the parts of greenland we'll see in the south have warmed 16 and a half degrees in the matter of a decade or two and what it looks like is that most of the cause of that is the change in sea ice around greenland as opposed to any other factor so this is crucial as we head to a blue ocean event with no sea ice around greenland we can expect very very large temperature excursions and we can um, yeah basically there, there's there's huge changes and there's also can be huge changes to the to the amoc as well um, 
because the salinity 